Hey guys, welcome to the 2 a.m. pipe on the patio. Cigar in the barn. Smoking an illusion. Uh, what was this one? I keep forgetting what this one is. It's a candela. It's a six and three quarter by 48 ring. Of course, I use the Piper Dave cigar scissors to cut the end off. And man, does that ever do an incredible incredible job man that is a fine cigar cutter and it works great on rope tobaccos too i was out this morning i uh, took a bag of coins that i had been saving for a couple years and i took them down to the coin star machine and turned those in while i was there I wound up buying this little cigar lighter. It is a Eagle torch with safe stop to keep me from lighting it when I don't want it to light because, you know, I'm kind of dangerous like that. But uh, it's a great little lighter. Works good. Of course, it's cold right now because it is friggin' freezing out here. So the flame isn't real long, isn't real giving it the best flame right now but uh, I need to keep that in my pocket. Put that in my pocket here so it stays warm. Any of you guys that know anything about butane ladders know you need to keep them warm to keep them working right. <clears throat> it still lights even when it's cold, but the flame isn't as long as it normally is. But uh, it's a single flame lighter. Worked perfect on this. The wind was blowing when I first got out here, so. Uh, I needed to have the, the torch working on it. Wanted to thank Wade Bass Piper for doing his video on cigar lighters for me. I had asked for some input on cigar lighters and Wade came through for me. Um, I'm looking to get a decent cigar lighter. This, this one here will just get me through until I get something decent. Wade gave me several good options for cigar lighters. Um, just need to even this out a little bit here. And, uh, Wade came through for me. He did a great video on all of his cigars, lighters, and he has a bunch. And uh, so he gave me the ups and downs of each one. And all of his were well within my price range. They were all in, I think, 15 to $30. He had one that was out of my price range, way out of my price range, but it was a huge table lighter. And uh, I'm not looking for that, so. Maybe it was a Perdomo or something like that, but uh, that's not what I'm looking for. But he gave me some great input. Uh, was very useful, very informative. 
told me what he liked about each one, why I would want a one flame, why I would want a two flame, why I would want a three flame, and why I would want a four flame, why each one was important, um, why certain ones were better for certain cigars. He recommended a three flame, which is probably what I'm going to go for. And I got the single flame. He said the single flame is really good for when you want to get, you know, certain areas, touch a certain area on a cigar. You know, it's more, uh, you, you can be more intricate with a single flame, whereas a three flame is going to get the whole cigar. But if you have an area on the cigar that's not burning real well, you can hit that with the single flame and get it lit. And that was something I had never thought about. So that was, you know, good information to have. He told me the more flames you have, the larger cigar you can light with it. Although he did say, you know, single flame can light a large cigar too, so. Uh, but it was just good information that I had never thought about. I'm, you know, I'm an, I'm an absolute newbie to cigars, and, and I know nothing about cigar lighters. So getting this information from somebody who smokes cigars was a, was a great uh, input, a great learning um, experience for me. And so I just wanted to thank Wade for doing that because that was just incredible for him to do that for me. So Wade, Bass Piper, thank you so much. If anybody's looking for information on, on lighters and, and the pluses and minuses of different lighters, check out that video. I'll put the link to it in my, my uh, description box here. So you can go watch it yourself if you want. Give Wade uh, some views, comment on it, let him know you appreciate him doing the video. So I, he recommended one that was like $14.99 or something. I think that's probably the one I'm going to wind up getting. It's a three flame lighter. So I'll probably do that. So I brought out the uh, Benchmade Presidio with me today because I was going to be carving some tampers. had a couple where I had a an oak stick that I, I got from the backyard actually I got it from the front yard that one I had was from the front yard it had been sitting out there for a while and it was the right size and everything for a tamper so I thought man I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna I'm gonna carve it up tonight today but the wood was no good it was kind of rotted once I got carving on it, it just wasn't good wood. But I got a bunch of newly fallen oak back in the back, so. I have two oak trees in the back that uh, I could pull from and I, and I like to get the stuff that falls and I got some maples in the front here and that's good hardwood so I'll use those for tampers and I have a couple of sticks that old pop sent me from Tennessee when I drove across country with Denny when I brought Denny here because she, she was offered a job here in Virginia, and that's why we came here. And so I drove her across country, with her across country, because I couldn't drive and, uh, at that time. So I drove with her in wherever we would go. 
about halfway across the country. I started picking up sticks wherever we would go in whatever state we were in. And, then, and I'd make a tamper. I'd pick up a stick in each state, make a tamper out of it. But I didn't do that in Tennessee. We went through Tennessee at night and we stopped at old Pop's place and hung out with old Pop's and his wife and his daughter and his brother Dan. And I never did get a stick in Tennessee. We stopped, we stayed in a, in a hotel in, in Nashville. And we stayed there for a day and we just hung out in the hotel for the day. We really didn't go out and do anything. We were just letting Den I was just letting Denny catch up on sleep because she'd been doing all the driving. And this was in the middle of the pandemic. So Nashville was pretty much closed. There was nothing going on in Nashville. <laughs> and, uh, and it was about the time of, of Sturgis. So there were a lot of bikers coming through, coming from Sturgis and, and stuff like that. And uh, we, uh, I didn't get any sticks from, from Tennessee. So old Pops asked me in one of my videos, did you get any sticks from Tennessee? And I said, no. So he said, well, I'm gonna send you a couple of really good sticks off of a tree in my backyard. And and man, he sent me a couple of really nice long, long sticks that are gonna make, and I, I didn't carve them yet. I've just been letting them age dry out and age real nice and and uh, got them in a box in the house in a wooden box and i'm going to make one long one that'll fit nicely in my overalls and then we'll probably make two short ones out of the other one And those will be my Tennessee tampers. And then when I went back home, Sadie and I went on a trip to Alaska. And I got a bunch of wood from Alaska. There were some trees that had blown down and I cut some branches off of that and made some, cut some little sticks and, and brought those back with me. And I picked up some stones from around lakes as we'd go to lakes in Alaska and there were some flat stones I have to get those and show them to you but they were flat stones with like bulbous ends on the end of them that made perfect tampers and they just were perfect for tampers but man you had to look for those you had to do a lot of searching to find the right stone for a tamper And I don't know what kind of stones they are. They're gray. But they've had the, you know, the lakes, water of the lakes just rushing, running over them for centuries. So they're super smooth. And they are, they just make, had make, they have made great tampers over the years. So everywhere I go, I try and do that. But, uh, from here, I'm just gonna try and use the oak in the back and the maple in the front. And uh, I have a black walnut tree. I have two black walnut trees that I would love to make tampers from, but I know black walnut has some uh, chemicals in it that can be um, toxic so I haven't done any tampers from those um, from what I've read when you, it gets hot it can release some of those toxins and um, I don't know that they would ever get hot enough in a, in a pipe tamping a pipe
Maybe I'll have to fashion it with a, a metal piece on the end or something so that they don't actually burn. Maybe get like a furniture tack or something and put it on the end of it. Mm, boy, this is smelling really good right now. Um, it is raining, starting to rain. But I'm covered, and I can sit out here in the rain now and smoke. This is a great cigar, great cigar. But I'm enjoying being out here, having this. And the cigar in the barn. And I put a block under my rocker so that I'm not making so much noise when I'm out here doing my videos with the rocker between my knees creaking and my rocker creaking. It was getting noisy out here, so. <laughs> I had a long one by two, so I just put that underneath the the rocking the rocker so that I don't rock make all that noise out here. But uh So I was sitting down here for about a half hour just listening to the radio before I started making this video. And uh, just thoroughly enjoying being able to sit out here when it's raining, listening to the rain, which is one of my favorite things in, in all of life is to sit out and listen to the rain. And uh, when I lived in San Diego, it rained so seldom. We had the second place Denny and I lived when we, we were married was an apartment in, a, in an apartment complex called Turtle Hill. And we had a balcony and I turned that balcony into my reading area and I, I brought a a light out there on the balcony and uh, I hung up some uh, bamboo shades so that I could go out there at night, turn the lights on. It wouldn't mess, you know, wouldn't bother my neighbors who were trying to sleep at night. You know, we were at the top of the hill, so I looked down on my neighbors below us. But I could 
pull those shades down. And I'd sit out there and I'd read. Every night I went out there and I read, uh, whether it was raining or not. But every night I would go out there and read, drink a little bourbon, smoke my pipe, and uh, read history books, Civil War history books. And uh, that's how I would spend my, my nights. When I'd get home and when I was playing gigs, you'd get home and you'd be so wound up from the gig that you couldn't sleep. So I'd go out there and I'd, I'd you know, have a little bourbon, smoke my pipe, and I'd read until I was tired. And then I'd go to sleep, and it was usually 4, 4.30 in the morning. And it was just so quiet and peaceful, you know. And I love that about about here. It's you know, you get the occasional siren from down in the, the valley, down in downtown Salem. You'll hear a siren every once in a while from the fire department or the ambulance or something going by, or sometimes a police car or something. But usually it's so quiet here. Ah, getting some thunder. Nice. Nice. Ah, one of my favorite things. We get great thunderstorms here. Especially in the summers. We get afternoon thunderstorms here in the summer. It'll last about an hour, hour and a half. Just tremendous thunderstorms. Lightning and thunder for about an hour, hour and a half, and then they go away. Clears up. But man, they just, it is just outrageous during the summer. So it'll be fun to have this out here. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you to Wade for his video. And I'm just going to sit out here and listen to the rain and the thunder and uh, enjoy this. So catch y'all later. Have a good one. God bless.